Psalms 113. Praise ye the Lord. That's 24 times in your Bible. That phrase. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Servants. Romans 6.18 and 6.22. We are servants of the Lord. We're no longer servants of sin, but we're servants of God. So what are we to do? According to Paul, we are to praise the Lord. Not a ball team. Not a graduation. This is the time. Not no bunch of people driving around left-hand turns on the track. We're to praise God. The God of God. Praise ye the Lord. Praise all ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. 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 God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Now the name of the Lord, I believe that would be the Lord Jesus Christ because there's no other name given, among, given, amongst heaven, given under heaven where man must be saved, Acts 4.12. Uh, praise ye the Lord, that's the Holy Spirit. The Pentecostals take that to the extreme. And again, Romans 6, 18, 6, 22 says servants of God instead of sin. So that's a little interesting thing there. But the Holy Spirit, according to uh, Jesus Christ in the Gospel of John, does not want worship, does not want praise. So you can break the verse down. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That name is Lord Jesus Christ, Jehovah, Emmanuel, God with us, Jehovah saves, Jehovah. From this time forward and forevermore. This time, now, present. You don't look back. You serve God now. You never say, oh, I used to go to church. I used to pray. I used to pass out gospel tracts. I no, no, no. It's now. This time, you bless the name of the Lord, and how to make God happy, which is the word "bless," is you do what He tells you to do, and He tells you to go to church. He tells you to read your Bible. He tells you to pray. He tells you go in all the world. That is what pleases God. He and He tells you to put your sins under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That pleases God today. You can't go back and change tomorrow. And if you are a backslider, get your butt up and get going. Get it under the blood. Get back in the Bible. Get back down to your knees and get out and tell people. Because you're living a terrible testimony. We've we got to call you in question if you're not doing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You better have the name of the Lord Jesus Christ upon your lips. If you don't confess Jesus with your mouth as part of salvation, Romans 10, 9, and 10, we can call you in a doubt about your salvation. Well, I bet you can name uh, all, the, all the players on your, team, your favorite ball team. I bet you can tell us who's going to start the, the, the lap position and, and all the way to the backfield. I bet you can name every city that your band is going to play. It's only one name. From the rise in the sun, east. The going down of the same, west. The Lord's name is to be praised. Worldwide, as far as your sin is from east to west, there is no limitations in that direction. If we can quote our sins are as far as far as far as from the east as the west, why can't we give God the same praise? You are to give God in your, the praise in your hometown and wherever you're living. That's exactly what the apostles did in uh, the, the book of Acts. Wherever they went, they praised the Lord. 
And by the way, the, the, the word of the Lord has gone from east to west. The word, the Lord is high above all nations. Oh, you mean there's someone better than America? There's somebody better than the Soviet Union. There's somebody better as the monarchy of, of England. You wouldn't think it by man's pride. Yeah, God bless America. God, uh, one nation under God. It doesn't mean nothing anymore. If you want to see America's gods, open up the yellow pages and look under churches. That's the gods of America. Who knows? They put, Maybe they even have a cult listing in the phone book. I never even thought about that. Look under O for a cult and see if they show up. And those churches, when you look under the tab of the yellow pages under churches, that's not going to mention, you know, the Orient, the Asian religions. You're not going to find Buddha under churches. So you got to go find Buddhism because that's in America. Karate and these, these martial art things. Yeah, they're good self-defense things, but if you were to really get heavy into it, it's a religion. Yoga is a religion. True yoga is when you sit there cross-legged and, and you get yourself out of your, your, your soul and out of your spirit and you become the, whatever you want to become. So look under yoga classes. I know people don't like that. Oh, another one. Yes, there is. If you look in the foundations, why should I spend the time? Why should I waste my energy for you to go find out something that you're doing in sin? Go find out the source of these things that you're involved in, yoga and all that. It's to be the name of the Lord to be praised. Look at some of the things that's going on in the public school system, meditation and all that. Prayer mats. Well, that's Islam. Did they, I was going to look up the other day. I'm, I'm going to do it and put it up on Facebook. They do it. I'll make the statement now, and I could be wrong, but I'll make it as far as when I grew up as a boy. My wife, Tracy, can also as, as do it too. Is You can't have the Bible in prayer in school, but you can have the Roman Catholic Church in school. I tell you right there, is a Christian. You say, "What are you talking about? What do we have for dinner? What do we have for lunch every Friday?" In the cafeteria, we used to have fish. What organization teaches you must eat fish on Friday to be saved? I wonder if they still do that today. Fish was one of the two options that you had on Fridays. That's a Roman Catholic. That's loud. That was loud in the public school system. Christmas is allowed in a public school system. Those two things show you right there. It ain't Bible because they don't want the Bible in prayer. God is not in the schools. He's not in the East and the West. I mean, don't they have the East Wing and, and the West Wings of buildings? Courthouses or East and West Wings. and Yet God, his name is not to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Well, I, I, I go out in the woods to find God. That's not where you're going to find his glory. The Bible says a born-again Christian is seated in heavenly places. You are seated above the heavens. Who is like unto the Lord our God? Who? Pope, Buddha, Muhammad, Joe Smith, Mary Baker Eddy, the Kellogg's brothers. You do know that they were involved in a cult. Uh, Judge Rufford.
Many Americans who put themselves on the pedestal. Who is like it the Lord our God? Who can create things? Well, scientists can do it. No, who can create things from nothing? Who's gonna like our? Who is like unto the Lord our God? Who's gonna save your soul like God can? You better not be trusted in a man as your salvation. Only the man Christ Jesus is the only one you're to trust, and he's he was fully God and fully man. No man's like that. You gonna trust some of these Bible theologians in the past, like Origin? You gonna trust in Calvin? You gonna put your trust in Luther? Yeah, he was right, but he still linked on to Mother Church. Who is like in the Lord our God, who dwelleth on high? Who is on high dwelling? Some of the people I mentioned, their, their soul is in heaven, but what about their body? It ain't there yet. Their body's still in the earth, waiting for the rapture. I mean, you can forward your mail to heaven, but you can't go pick it up yet. I know the Bible says, absent from the body and present with the Lord. That's right. But your body ain't there. Your new body ain't there. God has always been in on high. God has always been in the heaven. Even before the angels. Even before the cherubim. Even before Lucifer. Forever there was, there's been God. Where did God come from? God. You can't explain it. What eternal being is there like God, who's always been eternal? You can't even picture a beginning from him. You can't even fathom where he came from. You gonna like him married to God? All she was was a, a I was going to say a Christian, she got saved, but a, a Christian vessel used by God. She was a Jewish vessel to carry the, the uh, uh, embryo and pregnancy of the Lord Jesus Christ for nine months. And yet she was a sinner. She had to bring a sacrifice. Who are you gonna liken? Who are you gonna like unto the Lord our God? Yourself? You gotta be kidding me. You know when I go to sleep at night, I don't know what dreams I all my dreams I have. And there are dreams I have that as soon as I wake up, I don't remember it was. You ever think that God has something that happens to him and he can't remember? I forget things all the time. I forget names. I forget to do things. Now I'm going to probably forget more as long as this body is, uh, is in this, this frame. I'm already forgetting things now, so i got to look forward to forgetting things more later. Do you think God ever forgets? And yet, how many prayers, how many Christians are out there that are praying to God that he hears them all while he feeds all the animals? Who is like unto the Lord our God? You, you better keep man away from that position. And yet, in many fields of study and activities, there is a man in a man's life that they put as God. Even a pastor of a church. I know of churches personally where the pastor left for whatever things. It could have been good. It could have been bad. The people left and went where he went. Or stop going to that church because that pastor wasn't there no more. I know of places where a, a, a special pastor, and that's the time, that, that's one of their Christmases or Easter pilgrimages. 
to go hear this great this great preacher of faith. I know men in the ministry, they'll mention one man's name and don't you dare say anything about him, even if it's the truth. But who you who is like unto the Lord our God? I, want, I like to stay in this verse all night long. This is like a good verse to preach on the street next Saturday along with Who is like unto the Lord our God? Who is without sin? Where Pilate proclaimed Jesus Christ sinless and innocent, not guilty, five times. Can you do that in a courtroom? Can you be? Can you appear before a judge and be completely sinless? Yeah, right. No, you can't. You can't. So you can't be God because God is holy. And you are not. God is sinless. You are not. Who God humbleth himself to behold the things that are in the heaven and in the earth. You know, it is humbly for God to look down this earth. The eyes of the Lord are in every place behold evil and good. The holy God has to see what goes on in this miserable little planet. Why did God let those babies die? Yeah, but God watched those babies die and probably had a tear in his eyes. Every time you, you suck a, a, a life out of a woman, God sees it. And God welcomes that soul absent from the body present with the Lord who cannot have imputed sin into them because they had no knowledge of sin. God's got to welcome each one of those unborn infants into glory, shame to human race. Next we'll have, I don't know, maybe they do, post, what would you call it? Post-term pregnancy, where you you get you get the child after the child's born. A couple years back, when when that tsunami hit Japan, God saw it all. Sin is the result of God's judgment, and don't tell me He didn't warn Japan. He's warning America today. You better get right. And she's turning more and more against the warnings, just like Judah. Belshazzar could have got right. God gave him a written instructions to get right. Instead of getting drunk more and throwing up on the tables by morning, he could have been on his knees in his bedroom and saying, Lord, forgive me, a sinner. Go read the book of uh, Jonah. Jonah came with the same words. None of us going to be destroyed. I think he even gave a certain amount of days. And they got right. You know why you're not going to have a revival in America, Mr. Baptist preachers? First of all, your churches are not right. And when God warning, the, warning everybody like he done with a handwriting on the wall and like he done with, the, with a man that smells like uh, whale vomit, America is not getting strength. And God looks down the filth in this country and the pride of this country. He has to humble himself to do that. When God sees in nations that a 12 to 14 year old girl is sold by her parents for money and the things that happens to that child. And sees another child being picked up on the street and never ever again seen amongst her parents. And the filthiness that goes with that. I've told that certain places in, uh, I forget the city in Texas, you don't ever have your child on an airplane alone. I don't care if there's flight attendants in that watcher. You do not let them go alone because outside that airport, there are pigs and swine looking to get them. God has to humble himself when he watches a drunk sit there at the bar table, drink, 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 drink and then in the morning throw up all over himself. God has to watch with the humbling eyes and a humbling attitude as he sees in the bar room a man and a woman get together and have sexual fantasies and, and gravitations all night long as that seed produces a child that will never see the father in a lifetime. Uh, 
And God looks upon this nation and he sees that the wealth of this nation and the education of this nation, there are people suffering and there are hospitals and doctors over the place and they're not getting the care they deserve. And God has to watch a Christian today in 2014 suffer under religionists. I can't even imagine what kind of brutalities are happening to Christians today over this world. That's why we read missionary letters. Don't read the newspaper. They ain't going to tell you the truth. God has to humble himself. That's why you better put your sins first under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So God doesn't have to humble himself to, he to hear your prayer. Where If you are equal with God and you are under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are holy like God, your sins are confessed, they are gone, and you and God can now have a sweet fellowship as a father and son, and he doesn't have to humble himself to come and join you in prayer. You put your sins on the blood before you start praying and you stop praying about yourself. You pray for others. God will come down and put his hands around you and say, I love this fellowship. Man, let, you know, imagine God saying, wherever your prayer closet, you imagine God saying, let, let's, let's you and I stay like this together because I don't want to go outside your doors. I'm sick and tired of what's outside your door. Please, let's stay together right now. Our prayer life, God says, if it's right, our prayer life is a sweet smell in the Lord. What about when you smoke tobacco? You think God enjoys that as a Christian? What about when you open that can of beer that smells like piss? I can use the word piss. That's in the Bible. And that's exactly what Budweiser. And the other day at my workplace, I guess a can of beer is spilling or something. Man, as soon as I step in that back room, that stuff smells like piss. And if you're a Christian, you open that up, you make God smell that, that junk. And I know enough where, where a man and woman come together in sexual relations. I know there's a certain smell from, from, from the sexual relations. And God smells that smell as you're with another woman or another man. And you make God smell that. And then with the prayer life that's not right and wrong, God has to smell that. Oh, that's not a sweet savior. God is holy and just and righteous, and we are not. And to look upon this planet, don't you think God is angry with this planet? Don't you think God wants to call the church home now? Don't you think God wants to roll it all up? You better thank God God's long-suffering. Why hasn't the rapture happened? Because there's one man out there right now that's searching for God. And I bet a dollar to a dozen donuts, I bet you that the man that's being sent to that man right now is telling God, no, I'll put it off. I guarantee it. I've done it. I've had God tell me, give that person a gospel track, and I've told God, no. I have done it. I know exactly what I'm talking about. And that man would have been, what if that man I refused to give a gospel track? What if that was the man to get saved and trigger the rapture? How would you like to be the Christian called up to the judgment seat of Christ and say, ladies and gentlemen, Christian X, if he had would have passed out that gospel track, if he would have witnessed to this guy like I had told him, had he been in obedience, you guys would have been up here five years earlier. Isn't Jesus Christ going to speak the truth? What if the rapture is being held off because we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing? But we want God to come down into our prayer closet and we want Him to humble Himself to come down and hear our prayer of our needs. You know, there'd be somebody in your life that is not your family, is not yourself. This somebody, maybe a Christian in church or a Christian that you know somewhere else, you be you should be praying every day for that Christian with, with an ailment and he's got. I got one Christian right now, I'm praying, and we got we got differences among each other. And, and he's got a health concern. I, whenever I think about it, I lift him up in prayer for God to help him.
It's not about you. It's never about you. He raises the heavens and the earth. You know what's in the heaven? Powers and principalities and Satan's in the heaven. He's got his eyes on what's going on, on the heavens and the earth. And when you send those rovers and those space telescopes and the rocket ships and all the junk you got floating around the earth and the heaven, he knows all of it. I love to see God, the great white throne judgment hand, NASA scientists, uh, tickets for, for polluting the, earth, the solar system where they send us tickets. You know, on the highway, you see $1,000 uh, fine if they're littering. What about NASA? What about the space agencies of the world? They've been littering above our heads. How come they're not paying? They throw more garbage out there than my garbage, can, my garbage man missing the truck. He rises up, excuse me, he raises up the poor out of the dust. God is for the poor. More poor will get saved and do more for God than the rich. Now, I'm not saying a rich man can't be saved. I'm not saying a rich man can't serve the Lord. I can give you names of rich men, but it's it's money. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. There's something about that, that love that goes beyond love of anything else. The love of money will bypass the love of your wife or your family. And even the love of God. He raises up the poor out of the dust. And lifted the needy out of the dunghill. That's not a good place to be. That's the sewer of the, of the old days. The Old Testament. The old civilization. That's where the doo-doo went. That's what dung is. Doo-doo. Caca. What a place to be for a needy person. I mean, if you're in a pile of, you know what, you know the old term, I think you're very needy. That he may set him with princes. So they're going to be People who are homeless, who don't have nothing, never had anything. And they're going to be matched with the great scholars. Listen, when did Jesus Christ do that in his time? When did he use that event right here as a rebuke to others? When that poor widow came in with her two mites. Listen, he said there were people cashing in, in the money in the treasury out of the abundance. And here comes this woman. She casts all she had. And Jesus rebuked them and raised her up higher than all the people that were there present. You know, people who you don't think is a low esteem? Are you going? Are you going to tell me that somebody who sat in a pew of a church their entire life under a proper Bible teaching? And I don't. Let's. I don't know why. They, I'm not going to say they witness or not. I'm going to say what God called them. This is what they're calling. They're saved. What I want you to do uh, outside of sickness or, you know, reasonable excuse. I want you to sit in that pew for the rest of your life to encourage that preacher. You think, are you trying to tell me that God's not going to reward that guy for doing the will of God? Listen, I know what's preaching. I've been in a situation where I've, I've worked on a message and I stood there and I look around the room and there's nobody there. You don't get far with no one there in the message. And I've been in a room where I've had a message and three men come in the room. 
You say, well, that's three men, you know, for the mess. We didn't do the message that night. I allowed them to answer questions, and I had a one-on-one -on -one study with them. Listen, I'd rather have three people to hear the word of God than be in a room with silence with no one. And be able to answer their questions. If you do what God wants from you, you won't be poor. You'll have the opportunity to earn crowns, and if you go out and do what he tells you, you have the opportunity to earn, to, to rule in cities. Imagine a homeless man as he goes around collecting cans, whatever he does for a living, and listen, in the economy, he can't get anywhere, okay? That's, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt for some. And he leaves gospel tracts and goes to church Sunday when the mission's open. And goes to church Sunday night when the mission's open. And he goes to church during the midweek service when the mission's open. And not just for food, but for, for the bread of life. And wherever he goes, he finds a can, he deposits a gospel tract. That guy's poor. And then can you imagine that guy being called for a city when all these scholars this day and age and that and these these universities and the institutions and, and all that. And they're like, well, where's my city? What would you do for me? Well, I trained a whole bunch of men. Yeah, you told them the Bible is wrong. You told them this should be this and this should be that. I'm going to raise that man who loved me as who I am and went out and did what I told him to do. That he may set him with princes. Even with the princes of his people. You know Jesus Christ was on this planet was dirt poor. What did he own but five pieces of clothes? That's it. He didn't even have a camel. He didn't even have an ass. He didn't have a horse. He had to borrow someone's uh, colt of an ass. Then the disciples had to walk up to the gate and unloose the colt. They said, hey! What do you do with that coat? That means someone owned them. The Lord has need of them. Okay. Jesus made that coat. All the way back to Genesis 1. And he didn't even have one. And yet a Christian today in majority of places in the world will go on a mattress and sleep. And say, oh, life is tough. I don't know. All right. Verse 9. He maketh the barren woman to keep house. She's barren. She can't have children. She stood to marry and keep the house. Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, Elizabeth, Luke 1 7, Genesis 11 30, Genesis 25 2, Genesis 29 31, and Judges 13 verse 2. A barren woman can marry and still be awake. You find out that your wife is barren, can't keep children, don't you dare divorce her. She's still to keep house. And to be a griping mother of children. Well, that's the modern version. I've heard Christian mother. Oh, my child. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, well, you just violated Psalms uh, 113, verse 9, because it says to be a joyful mother of children. Well, how can a barren woman be a joyful woman of children? Ask Sarah. Ask Elizabeth. How about in the church you help the mothers in the nursery?
How about you help other women outside the church with their children, fellow Christians? How about if you were going to a family in church and say, listen, I know you guys have been married whatever time. Do you trust me as a, as a, as a brother or sister in the Lord? Well, it would be a sister in the Lord. Do you trust me as a sister in the Lord? Yeah, we trust. How would you guys like to just go out one of these nights, just you and husband and wife, and I'll take care of the kids for you? How about bring, you know, make sure you ask the parents permission, but bring, I used to bring lollipops and lifesavers for the children. I'd ask the parents. You're teaching the children how to give and not give, you're not, not giving just for, hey, hey that's someone who goes to church and, wow, they gave me a lollipop. Now, I'll tell you what happens like that. And, then, you know, you, you pat the kids on the head and you listen to their full talk and all that. You listen to their stories and all that. And then I, I think they would sooner call you a mother figure. Or at least when I've seen in church, they, they would call you like a grandma. And usually a good Christian family, a mother and father, would carry, they would call that person that loves the children a, a, a mother or a grandmother. It could be both ways. It could be like Elizabeth and like Rachel and like Sarah who couldn't have children and did have children. Maybe the one reason why you're not going to have a child right now is because you're not going to be joyful. Maybe God sees you going to be a miserable mother. But do you know I know one thing about being a Christian? I've seen more Christian women, Christian families, husband and wife, who want to have children. And for whatever reason, I don't know. I'm not going to say it's God. I'm not going to say it's Satan. I'm not going to say it's either the three. Is usually the man or the woman somewhere, or maybe both of them, unable. But I see people out there who who don't deserve children, and the government gives them gives them children, I and mean, gives them money for children, and they have more children and get more money. And you, you, you're sitting there scratching, hey, well, wait a minute, what's going on here? And that's one of the things I ponder, and as I, I look at, it, I'm like, wait a minute. The wicked get more children, read the book of Job, than those that are righteous. He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. And with that, you are to praise ye the Lord when we started this chapter off. Children are to be a joy, not a hindrance. America today, children are, are a hindrance that the fact is, let's wear protection not to have them. And if the protection or we didn't use protection didn't work, then let's abort them. And if they have that atmosphere to what God, what they think of God's creation of a human life, You're going to reap what you sow. Does the Bible say that or not? And don't you reap more than what you sow. So take how many women who have had abortion in America. Triple it and quadruple it. Maybe America will get to the point where she will have no more children to abort. And she will have no more children to populate herself. And maybe that's why President Obama and all that are allowing these Mexicans and all these immigrants to come to this country because they know something that the newspapers won't print. You know, they do send out every so often uh, a census. And you must, by law, answer that census. We'll close there. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder.
consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing, Sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How